G'day, Lockie here. So uh, I'm watching Cube come from home. Um, can't actually make it out to Copenhagen, so a little bit sad about that, but uh, still having good fun and live streams and tweets are keeping me up to date. One of the announcements I saw was uh, a sandbox container runtime called GVisor that's been released by Google. So naturally, being the inquisitive guy that I am, I wanted to actually go and kick the tires and, and take a look and see how it works. Now, this is coincidental for me uh, because as I do these OSS unboxings, I have actually done uh, nested virtualization in Kubernetes before, uh, a work through using clear containers. So I have my head in kind of the space of how this hangs together. So it was only natural for me to come and take a look and see if I could challenge myself and get GVisor up and running on Kubernetes uh, fairly quickly. Now, Go along to github.com, google slash gvisor to get started. Now, for those, I can link another video, but gvisor really aims to um, give you better secure uh, isolation between your application containers. So traditionally, when we're running at the moment, here's a couple of different models on the screen here. They do a great job of calling this out. I may not be able to do it the same justice, uh, but with virtual machines, obviously you have uh, VMM, which is emulating the hardware and managing the hardware under the hood. You've got a guest kernel, then you've got the application in the VM world, you've got the host kernel under here. In containers, you actually just have the application and everything shares the same kernel. So one uh, Docker, Docker engine, for example, is all sharing, sharing the same uh, host kernel. Now with GVise, you actually get a layer in, um, and I think I really like this line the best of all the documentation. So if you're reading along from home, I encourage you. So GVisor may be thought of as either a merged guest kernel and VMM, or a set comp on steroids. I'm going to stick with set comp on steroids. I think it's great. But the thing that we have here is we have the host kernel, we have the GVisor kernel. Without any hardware emulation there, then we have the application. So we have a really secure way to run trusted sandboxes. So you've heard of this with Kata containers. You have clear containers. You have um, Hyper-V runtimes as well, which do very similar things. Um, GVisor is another uh, tool in that arsenal. So naturally, I wanted to go through this and figure out if I could get it working fairly easily. Now, there's some documentation. I get all the way down to Kubernetes support, which is where I was interested. Now, um, GVisor can run sandbox containers in Kubernetes with CRIO. Um, I read through this. I took a look at it. It made sense to me, so I wanted to put it to the test. Now, being the inquisitive person that I am, I did not run CRIO, but I did manage to get it working. So what I actually was running is an ACS engine cluster um, on Azure uh, using uh, CRI container D, and I've just config configured another runtime, and I've actually managed to get it up and running. Now, all this to say, this is a lot of plumbing. It's about giving you secured um, uh, trusted sandbox containers here. So really I wanted to focus on in these unboxings is what does it look like to the user and how does the user interact with this system rather than getting into the nuts and bolts. So let me pop over and show you what I've done. So I, in, in the last video where I did nested virtualization, I, I basically wrote a very lightweight way to actually prove that this was true. So given that there's another kernel, I should be able to see that I have a host kernel. I should be able to see in a container running on GVisor in a trusted sandbox, I have a different kernel of the host. Um, and I also still have a clear kernel here. So this is ha uh, the work I've done before. So I actually have three different container runtimes. I have container D with run C. I have container D with uh, clear containers. I have container D with GVisor. So I've inserted that all into the one cluster. Now, um, the documentation is there on how to do this. I suggest you follow their documentation and not go off script like me, but I've pulled this apart a few times and I'm getting the gist of how it's working. So basically in this model, I actually annotate with clear containers using uh, container D and untrusted workload. So I'm saying that this is untrusted, so go ahead and run it in a sandbox or run it in a clear container. And in there, I'm just, I've got a bash, uh, a little loop here in bash that's just printing uname minus a in a loop, and that'll show me the kernel. I actually have um, a node selector on here, just a, a cheap way to actually get it to schedule to a subset of nodes. Now, I just went ahead and threw this in, but on the GVisor um, container D configuration, I've actually just used the same annotation there because that's what's exposed in container D at the moment. It may change coming down the line. That's different annotations to um, see at cryo. So same thing, and then host kernel. Okay, so popping over to a Kubernetes cluster. So in the top, I have the master. In the bottom, I actually have 
one of the Kubernetes nodes that's configured and I've compiled using Basil uh, GVisor and put it into place and follow the directions there. So let's just get started by taking a look at what I'm working with here. I've got a, t a 0 10 2 cluster um, and it should have a master and two nodes. Correct, so this is the master. Uh, agent pool zero, so this node is actually configured. I've put a label on this. I show labels. And we can see here that I have actually, uh, where have I labeled this thing? Uh, container runtime equals gvisor, and I should have container runtime equals clear containers. So I've labeled them as such. Um, what I'm going to do is just take this whole, so there are three deployments here and I'm going to up create them. Actually, I'll show you that there's nothing running. Oh, there is actually something running from me 10 minutes ago. So let's ha how about we go and delete that because I want to show that there's no funny business here. Um, deploy all. I'm going to delete those three deployments. We should see them disappear fairly quickly. Okay, we'll watch them clean up. So I think this is a really interesting space coming to having uh, sandbox and trusted workloads inside containers and moving the needle for enterprises, which was mentioned on, on stage, we should see in one of the keynotes yesterday. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and just apply this. Those, thing, those other two host kernels should terminate fairly soon. kubectl create dash f. So I'm going to apply all those. Okay. Right, so they did terminate. I have the, uh, the pod that's running in the clear containers runtime, the pod that's running in GVisor, and two on each host. I can do a dash O wide so that you can see I can actually have trusted and untrusted running at the same time. Um, via the via cryo into container D or via CRI into container D or via cryo I should say Okay, so they are all up and running. That's fantastic. Now just the proofs in the pudding here cube cutter logs And I'm going to get the deployment. Let's take a look at gvisor kernel So I Remember, I'm just running uh, uname minus a in a loop every 30 seconds. So I can see I'm running 3.11.10. Um, let's compare that against the host kernel, right, which is 4.13. And I should have a clear kernel as well. So I actually have three different incarnations. So 4.14.22 4, 4, there in a container. So. I have three different runtimes, three different pods running in three different runtimes now. Under the hood, if I pop down here into the agent pool, let's try and figure out what is going under the hood. So I should have access to um, run SC. Now it's looking for a root of this namespace. I'm just going to run under here and run a list. Now I can actually see that there are some sandbox containers here. I don't know why I'm getting this error at the moment. It's looking for a meta file, a metadata file that's not present. It could be with my setup, so um, that's not, not an issue. But the container is running nevertheless, and if I just grep for run SC, um, let's take a look at what we got. So I would expect to see uh, two containers, the pause and the application container. Uh, so we can see here under this process ID, yep, we have this one and this one, so two different containers running in as trusted sandboxes. So um, these are under the same, this one, yep, under the same parent. So these two are related here as a parent and these two are related. So that would identify the pause container and um, the application container there that's running that uname minus a in a loop. Um, there are a whole bunch of other utilities here if I use run SC. Um, I'm still getting used to using this and it is experimental, but what I wanted to show is here we have a Kubernetes cluster and using um, a node selector or taints or tolerations, I can actually, with some annotations, I can actually dedicate workloads 
to run in trusted sandboxes, and I haven't actually left the Kubernetes API, even though I've got some nuts and bolts and showing you this here. Um, in this space, I'm really excited to see what comes with these trusted um, sandbox workloads. Follow um, GVisor, Cutter Containers, they're great places to go and get some resources. Um, and I will link my other video on uh, nested virtualization and Kubernetes as well. Now, if you do find these videos, um, thanks for watching. If you do find them useful, uh, please go ahead and subscribe. I appreciate all your support and thanks for watching. Cheers.